Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we've got another Trig on Tuesday that doesn't involve any trig. Today we're going to talk about logarithms. Now logarithms are the basis of the slide rule, like this one, which is my father's. And I don't think that they're stressed very much in high school mathematics. Now when working with logarithms, we've already become familiar with these two right here. If you take two numbers that are multiplied together and take the log of them, it's the same as adding the log of each number together. Likewise, if you divide those numbers, you subtract one log from the other. So as I said, I've got my father's slide rule right here, and we're going to go over the LL, or the log-log scales, on the slide rule, and we're going to learn how to do some really neat things with logarithms. So let's cue up the music and get going. Well, let's start this off by saying when we would use these log-log scales and logarithms. So let's look at a couple of common problems in science. First of all, say you find a clay pot or an artifact, and you notice when you measure it that it has 1.5% of the original amount of carbon-14 that it had when it was new. How old is it? And I tried this out the other day, and it was actually kind of fun. If you have a list of a thousand names, and you cut that list in half, how many times would you have to divide this list in half to find one name? Now, the only thing that you have to assume with that is that it's an equal division, and you know which half the name is in. These are all things that can be done with logarithms. Well, let's go over the rules of logarithms again. First of all, let's say we have something that is log 10 of x equals z. That means that if you raise 10 to the power of z, you get x. A lot of people understand this, so let's bring it to the next level. OK, so let's have a look at a quick problem here. So here's an interesting one. Let's take 3 raised to the power of 2x minus 7 equals 27. Now, what can we do with that? First of all, 27 is kind of an interesting number because that we can rewrite that to say that 3 raised to the power of 2x minus 7 equals 3 raised to the power of 3. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you take the logarithm of both sides, so long as it's the same logarithm, it's the same thing as multiplying both sides by 1. They still equal each other. So let's do something here a little bit different. Let's look at log 3 of 3 to the 2x minus 7 equals log 3 of 3 to the third. So let's go over a quick rule that we can use with logarithms. If you have a number that you're taking the log of that's raised to a power, such as these, you can take that power and bring it over to the front. So we can rewrite that like this. Now here's an interesting thing right here. First of all, these are both the same terms. And we can divide by log 3 of 3 to both sides. But what is log 3 of 3? It's just 1. So this means that 2x minus 7 equals 3. Now, bringing this 7 over to the other side, we get 2x equals 10. So x equals 5. See that neat little trick? So here's another quick one that we can do. So we've got these two equations right here. So 2 raised to the power of x plus 3 equals 4 raised to the power of x minus 1. Notice we have a relationship here between the 2 and the 4. We have 2, x plus 3, equals 2 times 2, x minus 1. 
See how that works out? We just brought the exponent up. Let's do this in two steps so it's very clear. So now we have 2 x plus 3 equals 2 to the 2x minus 2. We just multiplied it out. Now we can take log 2 of both of these. Once again, we'll bring these around to the front. We get x plus 3 log 2 to 2 equals 2x minus 2 log 2 2. Sorry, I left the 2 out right there. Now we divide out the 1, and we get x plus 3 equals 2x minus 2. Subtract x here. Add or subtract a negative 2 to that. We get 5 equals x. Same answer as last time, just a different problem. Now here's kind of an interesting problem. We have 3 raised to the power of x plus 2 equals 2 raised to the power of x minus 1. Notice we can't really get any terms together here, but we can still have a little bit of fun with this. Now one of the rules of logarithms is if you have two terms that equal each other, if you take the log of both of those terms, they'll equal each other as well. And it doesn't matter what base you're going to use. So for example, we could use the natural log of 3x plus 2 equals the natural log 2x minus 1. So long as these terms right here are the same, it's the same thing as multiplying each side by 1. Now, when we have the logarithms, remember what we can do with the exponents. We just bring them around. So now we have x plus 2 times the log, natural log of 3 equals x minus 1 times the natural log of 2. So now let's go ahead and just bring these terms together. So we've got x, natural log of 3, plus 2, natural log of 3, equals x, natural log of 2, minus, sorry, minus there, natural log of 2. We've got that minus 1. Now, let's bring the terms here that have x in them both over to the same side. So we'll have x natural log of 3 minus x natural log of 2 equals negative natural log of 2 minus 2 times the natural log of 3. Now, here, we have an x on both sides. So we can have x times the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 2 equals negative natural log 2 minus 2 natural log 3. Now we can take this term and divide it over here, and we can come up with x equals negative natural log 2 minus 2 natural log 3 over natural log 3 minus natural log of 2. Now the interesting thing about this is all of these have actual values. You can look these up and it'll tell you exactly what that number is and you can solve for x that way. Now let's go ahead and have a look at these problems. We'll do the first one right now. If an artifact has 1.5% of the original carbon-14 that was in it when it was made, how old is it? Now to solve this, we need to understand that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. So let's see how we solve this on the slide rule right here. They're called LL or log-log scales. One is in red and is below 1. 
the other is in black, and it starts at 1 and goes higher. On the other side of the slide rule, you'll see we have a red 2 and 3 scale and a black 2 and 3 scale. Let's start off with a black LL1 scale. So it starts at 1.01. .01. And as you see, it goes up to 0 0.015, then 1.02, etc. And it goes all the way up here to a little bit more than 1.1. .1. Now, if we come down here to the LL2 scale, you'll see it starts at 1.11, and it works its way up. And then when we reach the end here, E, we'll go over what E is another time. That's 2.7128. Then it starts over again at E on the LL3 scale. And it goes all the way up. 20,000. But what we're going to use for this problem is the red scale here, and this is LL2 red. Right here, you'll see 0 0.50. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our cursor right over 0 0.50, and then right underneath it, we're going to have 5.73, and I've already got it set up for that. Now, this is the unique feature of a slide rule. Once you've set it up, you've got a table here that you can use. So all I have to do to find 1.5% is I need to find 1%, which is right there. There's 2%, and right in the middle, that's 1.5%. Then all I have to do is read down to the C scale, and that's right here. And this is 3. That's 3, 5. This is 3, 4, 6. Now, like all problems with a slide rule, you have to decide where you're going to put the decimal place. Well, here's a quick rule of thumb. If you use the same scale that you set your key to originally, say we had 60%, I, I could read down here and I would come up with 4, 2. Now, since 5 was 5,730, this is probably 4,200. However, right underneath the 60, it would be 0.62%. The cursor would still be on 4.2. However, that would be 42,000, because the difference in magnitude from the top scale to the middle scale here is 10. So if we go back over here to 1.5, we have an answer of 3, 4, 0.7 roughly. That would be 34,700 years. So again, the way you do it, get up here to the 50%, the 0.5 on the red scale. Then you put the half-life of the particular radioisotope that you're dealing with under the cursor. And then you come down to the percentage. Here, we'll go to 5% right here. If that object had 5% of the original activity in it, how old would it be? Well, here's 20,000. Here's 25,000. It would be 24,800 years old. We'll talk about this a little bit more on Friday when we go over radiometric dating. Now, the last one's actually kind of fun. If you had a list of 1,000 names, how many times would you have to divide that list in two? to find a single name. Assume that you knew which half the name was in. We're going to calculate this for 1,000 on the slide rule. Let's just do it by hand for 100. So if we have 100 names, if we divide that once, we're going to have 50 and 50. Well, that we don't need anymore because we know our name's in here. Well, we divide it twice. Now we have 25 and 25. Again. We don't need that one because we know our name is in this. So 3. Now we have 12 and a half and 12 and a half. We're going to get rid of that one again. 6.25. 6.25. Again, going to get rid of that one. So you see, we're just working our way down and we're eliminating whichever list does not contain our name. So after five splits, we're down 
the 3.125 names. Well, what's the formula for this? Well, n, the number of splits, equals the log base 2 of the number of names on the list. So whether this be 100 or it be 1,000, we can get an answer. So remember, we just tried this, and it looks like it's going to be a little bit over 6. So let's go ahead and go to log base 2. So here's the 2 right here. We're going to go ahead and put the index on that. So now we're going to be able to just read off the number up here. So for 1,000, well, actually for 100, start off with that one. We go right over the 100, and it comes out to 6.667. And that's right in line with what we got. How about 1,000? Well, 1,000 is going to be right here. Notice that it is just shy of the 1. And the answer to that is going to be 9.97. You can try that at home if you would like, and you'll see that you, you won't need more than 10, because it's 9.97. Remember I said it was 9.97? Let's go ahead and do that. So 2, we're going to raise it to the power of 9.97, and it's 1,002. The reason I did this video today is I wanted to just introduce the log-log scales on the slide rule, and I wanted to give you a little bit of background for when we worked with radiometric dating on Friday. So in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you again for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.